Hey, Bible Release Time students, it's great to be back with you. I hope that you're ready for school to get started. Before we get started with our video today, I have a message for the parents. Here at the church at Sturkey Hills, and hopefully in surrounding counties, we plan on having release time courses at the churches this semester. Now, I'm not sure if that's going to happen the first month or even the second month, but hopefully sometime this semester, we'll be able to get the kids back here at the church. Until then, we'll just keep doing online content. Something to remember is that release time courses are totally dependent upon parents requesting that their kids leave school and come to the church for an hour every month. We're going to try and make that easier for you guys here in Knox County by getting a system where we can put our permission forms online and then they come to the church and we can let the school know who has requested release from school to come to release time courses. Hopefully I'll have more information next month on that process. Until then, we want to keep bringing you content like we have throughout the summer. So I have Angela here today and Emily who are going to give you a lesson and sing some songs with you. Before we get started, I've got a scripture memory verse for you today. That verse is Hebrews 11.6. It says, And without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Have a great class. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God So my 
Watching love be the shining light Breaking chains that were holding me You set your sun down and set me free Everything of this world will fade I'm pressing on till I see your face I will live that your will be done I won't stop till your kingdom come Hey guys, welcome to Release Time. I'm so glad that you are watching this right now and I hope you had a wonderful summer. We're gonna do a little bit of review to see how much you remembered from this year and hopefully we'll get together soon. So who can tell me what this is? Do you remember? It's the Bible. It's also known as God's Word. And what we know about God's Word? It is truth. The Bible is truth now remember you're gonna hear lies your entire life that is why it is so important that you know the truth the Bible is truth now when we first started reading the Bible going through the Bible we started in the first book of the Bible do you remember what that was the book of Genesis now we read in Genesis 1 1 it said in the beginning God who God created the heavens and the earth. Do you remember how long it took him to create everything? Six days. And on the seventh day, he rested. His world was perfect. Now you remember on the sixth day, he created animals, but all land animals. But on the sixth day, he also created or made something very special. Do you remember what that was? He made humans, man and woman. Do you remember what he named them? Adam and Eve. Adam meaning dust and Eve life-giving. But you know what? Even though the world was perfect, Adam and Eve did something. They disobeyed. And because they disobeyed, they were separated from God. They could no longer have a relationship with God. So God kicked them out of the garden. And when they were kicked out of the garden, or excuse me, when they, when they disobeyed, they brought something into the world. Do you know what that was? Sin. Because they disobeyed, sin came into the world and death. But you know what? This is what the Bible said. God had a plan. Even before he made the foundation of the world to send his son Jesus to die for our sin. The Bible tells us that Jesus took our punishment. He placed that sin upon himself. He became sin for us. He didn't know sin, but he took our sin from us by dying on the cross and the Bible says that Jesus is the only way to heaven there is no other way we find that in John 14 6 where it says this if I can get there really fast it says John 14 6 says Jesus said to him I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the Father except through me who's me Jesus. Jesus is the only way. We must believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sin. He was buried and he came back to life. And if we believe that, we can have everlasting life. And the Bible is a record of God working out that incredible plan. 
Now also in the book of Genesis, we read about a man named Abraham. And God promised Abraham that he would have so many descendants, that's children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and great-grandchildren, he, had so many, he would have so many descendants, they would outnumber the stars in the sky. Now, in the Bible, those descendants are sometimes called Israelites or Hebrews or Jews. So those names are um, intertwined all through Scripture. And one of those descendants would come thousands of years later, and his name was Jesus. Well, Satan knew that this was God's plan to send Jesus to save us from our sin. And so he continually did things to try to destroy, to wipe out the Jewish people. We also learn in um, the book of Genesis that God promised Abraham the land of Canaan. And so Abraham packed up and he moved to Canaan. And there he started his family. And if you remember, Abraham, one of Abraham's great grandsons was Joseph. And Joseph was taken to Egypt and there he was sold as a slave. Then he was thrown into prison. But when he was 30 years old, he became second in command of all of Egypt. He became a leader of Egypt. And the Bible tells us that during a time of famine where there was no food and people were starving, Joseph saved millions of lives. So during that time of famine, Joseph had his entire family move from Canaan to Egypt because there was no food in Canaan also. So they moved to Egypt. The Bible tells us that his father, Jacob, that, that God had changed his name to Israel. So Israel came to Egypt. Joseph's 11 brothers and their families all moved to Egypt. There were 70 in all. And the Bible tells us, that Joseph forgave his brothers for what they did to him. He said, what you meant for evil, God meant it for good so that many lives were saved. And people were saved because of Joseph. Now, you would think that after the seven years of famine was over, the Israelites would move back, or the Jews or the Hebrews would move back to the land that God had promised, the land of Canaan. But instead, they stayed right there in Egypt, and they continued to grow in number. Well, in time, Joseph and his brothers died, and the king of Egypt died, and new kings came in. And those new kings forgot all about Joseph and didn't even realize that Joseph had saved millions of lives and saved Egypt from ruin. They forgot all about Joseph. Joseph. And that is the entire book of Genesis summed up. And now we step into the second book of the Bible. Do you know what the second book of the Bible is? Exodus. Do you know what Exodus means? Exit. So here's what we find out. It is 400 years later. There's a new king in Egypt and the numbers of Israelites, now remember when they came to live in Egypt, there were only 70 of them. Now there are millions. And this was a threat to the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. So he decided to make the Israelites slaves. He thought that if he made them slaves, they would die off. But instead, they continued to grow in number. So the Bible tells us that Pharaoh called the midwives. Now, midwives are women who helped uh, pregnant women deliver their babies. And he told the midwives that when the Jewish women were delivering their babies, that they were to kill those babies. Well, the Bible says that the midwives feared God and they knew that killing babies was wrong and so they wouldn't do it. So 
because the midwives wouldn't kill the babies, Pharaoh told all the people of Egypt that if they saw a Hebrew baby boy, they were to take that baby boy and they were to throw him in the Nile River. So the guards went out from door to door of the homes of the Israelites and they would take their babies and they would throw them into the Nile River. This was an evil, evil thing because remember, Satan was wanting to destroy the Israelites. Well, there was a family, Jochebed and Amram, who had a baby boy. And they didn't listen to the Pharaoh. They kept their baby hidden. And the Bible tells us they kept their baby hidden for about three months. But if you have a baby brother or sister or a niece or nephew or cousin, it's kind of hard to keep a baby quiet and hidden. So after three months, when, when they could no longer keep their baby hidden, Jochebed took their baby, <clears throat> excuse me, took their baby and made a basket. She put tar on the outside of the basket. And then she wrapped the baby and she placed him inside the basket. And then she put a lid on top. She placed the basket, the Bible tells us, in the river among the reeds to keep the basket hidden. And they had their daughter, Miriam, watch the basket to make sure that it was safe, that nothing happened. Well, Pharaoh's daughter came down to the river to take a bath and she saw the, ba the basket. And so she told her servant girl to go over and get that basket and bring it to her. And when the servant brought the basket to the princess, the princess opened the lid and she saw a Hebrew baby boy inside. Now she knew that this, this baby boy was supposed to be put to death. But you know what she did? She reached into the basket and picked him up, held him in her arms, and she named him Moses, which means to draw out, because she drew him out of the water. Well, Miriam came over to the princess and she said, would you like me to find a Hebrew mother who could help take care of the baby? And the princess said, yes. Well, guess who they got? Guess who Miriam went and got to get to take care of baby Moses? Her parents. And the princess said, please take care of him and I will pay you until he is old enough to come and live with me in the palace. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? They got to raise their own son for a while and get paid for it. Well, the day came when it was time to take Moses to the palace. Here he went from the home of a slave to the home of of the most powerful man on earth. Here he was given everything. He had the best food, the best clothing, the best education. He had everything he could possibly want. But you know what? The Bible doesn't tell us much about Moses' growing up years. But we do know this, that Moses had great faith in God. You see, the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, you need to read this chapter. It's one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. This is what it says about Moses and his family. We read, By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, when Mo by faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated 
with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. You see, the Bible says that Moses chose to forsake his Egyptian home. He, he turned away from his position. He could have been the prince of Egypt, but instead he turned away from that because he wanted to be identified with God's chosen people, the Jews. He decided that it was better to stand with Christ than to have all the treasures that Egypt had to offer because he looked forward to his reward in heaven. By faith, Moses left Egypt. He was not afraid of the king's anger. He persevered. Listen to this. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. Isn't that amazing? He saw Christ. And that excites me so much. And I wish that people today would be so focused on Christ and what God wants rather than what we want. Wouldn't it be great if people put aside all of their wants and just followed Jesus? But you know, we can't do it on our own, in our own power. We must have faith. And the Bible tells us in Hebrews 11, verse 6, he says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and he rewards those who seek him. God rewards you if you seek after him and your reward is in heaven. That should be our focus. But again, it's by faith. We cannot work ourselves into the presence of God. We cannot work ourselves into heaven. No matter how many good things we do, none of that matters. It is by faith alone in Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, it says this. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing. Again, it's not of your works. So that you cannot boast. You can't say, look at all the things that I've done. Look at how good I am. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with faith in Christ alone. And that's what Moses had. Moses had faith in God and he looked forward to his reward in heaven. He didn't take all the treasures that he uh, could have gotten and he was actually given. He didn't care about that because he looked forward to his reward in heaven. God loves you so much. And he desires that no one should die. No one should be separated from him. But we must put our trust in Christ and in him alone. I am so thankful for what Jesus did for me. And I, and I am grateful for that free gift. As in this verse, it says that, oops, I thought I switched it. It says that it is a gift of God. Eternal life is through Christ, believing that Jesus died for your sin. He was buried and he came back to life. If we believe that, we can have everlasting life. If you guys have any questions, I would love to answer those. You can contact the church, contact me through email. Would love to hear from you. And I look forward to seeing you in the fall. You all have a wonderful day. Thank you.